Hi everyone and welcome to Wall Street Multimedia's Market Watch. I'm Tiffany Liu with the latest market news. On Monday, China's benchmark, the Shanghai Composite, slid 8.5% its biggest daily loss since 2007. The drought had global effects with Europe falling over 2% and the Dow Jones tumbling almost 128 points by the day's close. On Tuesday, Chinese stocks ended lower as Beijing announced it would renew support measures following Monday's loss. The number of new stock investors in China has since fallen to its lowest recorded level. Meanwhile, U.S. stocks opened 0.4% higher before trimming gains after new data showed consumer confidence in July fell to a 10-month low. The Dow advanced over 130 points by midday and is poised to break a five-day losing streak. Now let's turn to Matthew Cheslock, who will give us his expert commentary on the U.S. and Chinese stock market. So the Shanghai Composite dropped 8.5% on Monday, its biggest daily loss since 2007. Uh, what do you think is the cause of this, and have we reached the limits of China's interventionary measures? Well, I don't think we've reached the limits of China's interventionary procedures at all. I think, you know, as a matter of fact, I think they came out today and they said that they were going to be actively involved still, and we saw a rebound off the lows. So uh, I don't think that was the reason. I, I think it was just uh, we saw a, a massive move to the... Uh, higher over the last five weeks, a 16% correction uh, off the lows. So I think it was just time where when there was a rumor of uh, the government backing off, people got scared and they came in and sold stock again because there are still stocks that are halted and they still can't do exactly what they want. It's not a free market yet. So and I think people got worried about um, some of that as far as, um, you know, trading uh, as freely as they can. Do you think the renewed measures will be as effective? Um, well, you know, the, if you talked yesterday and the headlines were people were um, not so sure about what the government was putting out, could they believe the numbers that they were putting out? And then today we're seeing a, a nice rally in it, so everyone's back on board. So uh, the measures are in place. They've been pretty adamant about what they're going to do to support the economy and, and support the stock market. So uh, you got to take it for what it's worth, and they are going to be there to support it. Uh, following China's stock market route, the Dow tumbled three digits, touching a five-month low on Monday. Is there any concern that a drop in the Chinese market could spill over to the U.S.? Um, there certainly is a concern, but then the U.S. would probably be the major uh, point of liquidity. So there, m people will probably invest more in here. And that's why we saw less than a 1% drop in the U.S. market. So people were fairly certain uh, that they have a f accommodating Fed uh, and they already know the worst is behind the U.S. So it's, it's a good time to invest in this economy, especially in companies that are uh, probably just based in the U.S. They fared the, uh, the, the best out of all of these. Uh, between a lackluster earnings season, the ongoing energy sell-off, and the Fed's upcoming policy statement, how do you think the U.S. stock market is reacting to all these factors, and how will it perform going forward? Well, you, I mean, you didn't even mention Greece and all this, and, and what's amazing is the market has performed pretty well. Uh, you know, we haven't seen that massive sell-off that everyone's expecting. We bounced off the 200-day moving average yesterday, which was uh, a, a technically a buy signal. We haven't broken out to new highs, and we are trading above the, the all-time highs. But w considering all this stuff that you mentioned, I think the market's performed pretty well. Uh, and I think what we're going to see now is what are forecasts going forward. And if we can achieve those, the market could break out higher. That's it for today's episode. I'm Tiffany Liu, and thanks for watching Market Watch. I'll see you again next time.